Hey everyone, today we're gonna to be talking about self-patching the labyrinth. If you're just finding this video, it's a part of a whole tutorial series on the labyrinth. In earlier videos, I go through all the different functions and how to use it and what it sounds like. And in the next couple of videos, I'm gonna sh I'm gonna patch it with the rest of the Sound Studio as well as a whole bunch of other Eurorack modules. So if you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Also, if you're interested in more content like this and patching for the Sound Studio, make sure to check out my Patreon page. The link's in the description below. Okay, so let's get to the patching. So first of all, this is a very kind of creative and experimental synth. So there's no way for me to really show you all the patching, of course. Um, and also there's so many different things that uh, rabbit holes that I've gone down and um, ways to patch it and approach it that I probably haven't even thought of. So this is just kind of like three ideas or three sort of approaches to either give you a sense of what it can do or just kind of create some, um, maybe give you some creative ideas. So first of all, let's start with just an overview of the patch bay. I went through all the individual patches in the last video, but I feel like they kind of go fit into like maybe two different categories. Um, and the top part is like sound design and signal routing. And the bottom part is kind of like transport functions and sequencing and things like that. I mean, of course there's like crossover to all that stuff, but let's talk a little bit about one idea that you can use the sequencer patching for this. I explored this idea in a little short that I put out. I'll put a link in the description. Basically what I'm using is sequencer two to flip the bits of sequencer one and kind of create these repetitive patterns. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So this is the sound that we have. This is just the buffer that comes with it. That's it. Um, so what we're gonna do here is I'm going to, first of all, go through the sequencer and I'm gonna flip all the bits of sequencer one. So now there's nothing playing. So if I turn the the envelope trig mix down, nothing will play at all. And, and just that sound that was coming out, that was only the VCO one coming out. There's no, you know, nothing really coloring it too much or anything. Now for sequencer two, what I'm gonna do is change the length down, I think number seven is where I had it. And I'm gonna set the bits to one and five. So what's gonna happen, we're gonna turn the sequencer to trig to bit flip right here, sequencer one. Now what's gonna happen is it'll slowly start lighting up the sequence. And because of the ratio and the bits that I have turned on, you'll notice that it fills up to where it's playing all of them, and then it'll go back down to where it's playing no nothing. And so it'll go up and down and up and down. So watch this. And it's kind of cool because every time a bit gets flipped, there's a new CV that's generated. So it, it makes this nice big sequence and then it brings it down and there's nothing there again. That sounds super cool if you were to turn the tempo way down, turn some killer reverb on. Here, let me put some, some reverb on after the fact and listen to it now.
so you get the idea. Now this um, this particular sequence with seven steps and one and five does it so it just fills up and goes down. But if you were to do something else, let's, let's maybe turn it down to five steps and here let's um, let's do that for um, for the bit flips and I'll go ahead and reset all of these and then we'll reset it. You can notice that there's a much longer pattern that emerges. It doesn't quite perfectly fill up and go back down, but it's still pretty cool. I'm going to turn up the tempo for this one. And if you notice right there, when it emptied out, it was resetting the whole sequence. And you'll notice that it just keeps repeating over and over again. Resets. Resets. Pretty cool stuff. So that's just one idea. Let's take a look at some other sort of modulation sources that you could use. One thing that's absent from the labyrinth is an LFO, but we do have our mod VCO where it has a very broad range of frequency and you can bring it down out of audio rate to function as an LFO. So let's just take a look at that. We'll visualize it with the data here. And if I throw it into the oscilloscope, you can see that it basically looks like an LFO and you can crank it way up into audio rate. So let's try using that as a few patch points. There are a couple of really obvious ones, the fold and cutoff. Let's just quickly hear what those sound like. So without anything. So I just should point out, with these two, these two knobs here, you can notice that it says EG1 slash CV amount. So what that means is this acts as an attenuverter for incoming signals. So if you leave it at noon, nothing's going to happen. And if you turn it down counterclockwise, it inverts the CV and then clockwise it gives the just the CV from the LFO. So let's try plugging that into the folder into the wave folder and I'll set it to parallel processing and turn the blend all the way to wave folder. Now you can't hear anything right now because it's set to noon. create some really fun stuff if you crank this up into audio rate. Pretty cool. Let's just let's go into the cutoff just for fun and I'll turn the blend all the way to the filter cutoff. So it acts basically how you'd expect. There are a couple of other interesting patch points. Um, the first is this blend knob. Now, that's one of the cool things about the um, the labyrinth is that it kind of blends between these two parallel processing, uh, the wave folding and the cutoff. So it's kind of cool to see um, to see the 
uh, LFO going back and forth between those. So let's just listen to that. So the last idea that I wanted to show today is we are going to make use of this sync on the mod VCO. Now, what sync does when you sync oscillators is it resets the phase of the wave whenever there's a rising edge on another oscillator. So if you were syncing two different oscillators, it would basically make the, it would force the oscillators to line up and what that does in practical terms is it makes them sound um, like they're tuned together. Now it's not perfect because um, obviously one oscillator is functioning at a different level, but because they are resetting over and over again, the, it almost has this kind of detuned, cool, um, they sound like they're in tune together. So, um, so what we're gonna do is we are actually gonna sync this this VCO to this VCO and kind of create some cool waveforms. Now, one of the challenges that you have with this is that um, if, if there was an out for VCO one, like there is, for instance, on the mother, you have your VCO saw output and your VCO pulse output. So you can actually take those and use that you could use those to sync up other things which we might do in later videos but here because there is no vco one output um, that creates we have to get a little bit creative and so what we're going to do is actually mess with the routing and notice we have this mixer out now what that does is the sound that's coming through it gets to the mixer section and we can take the output out there before it goes into our two colorizers. So if we do that, right now I have everything turned down but VCO1. So if we do that, that gives us, this signal is just VCO1. It basically turns that mixer into a VCO1 out. And I'm gonna sync up the mod VCO to it. So now it's almost like they're gonna be in tune together. In fact, I'm going to turn the gain way down on my mixer and I'm going to plug this in so we can actually hear it. And you'll notice that when I turn this VCO, it's going to tune it. And so you can get those cool um, sort of wah sounds, those formant sounds. Uh, it's really interesting stuff. It almost sounds like vocal tones when you turn this way up. So that's what we're gonna kind of make use of. Um, so these are synced up right now. The only issue is we don't hear it and we can't put it back into the mixer section because if we turn up the mod VCO, it's gonna come through the mixer and it's gonna mess with the whole syncing. So we have to get that sound out and back in. And so what we can do is actually reroute it to go back into one of these colorizers. So you can choose either one. We can either go into the fold or we can go into the cutoff. Let's, or I'm sorry, or we can go into the filter. Let's go ahead and send it into the filter and I'm gonna turn this the order, the processing order from, uh, we're gonna turn it from parallel down into filter first, then wave folder. So that way it's processed by both as well. If we left it in parallel, that would be fine. It's just that since it's only going into the cutoff, it won't be processed by the wave folder. And then I'm gonna turn my blend all the way up to the filter and now, so 
Pretty cool. Let's try actually sending it into the wave folder and actually let's see. So it sounds cool when there's some movement to it. So I'm gonna turn up this amount. I'm also going to turn, let's try turning up the sequencer to CV range. I'm turning this all the way up too, so we get that huge impact from that CV level. Also, just want to point out that this utility mixer, what basically what's happening in here too is that the ring mod, when there's nothing plugged into this, there's that the ring mod of these two, and that can produce some cool stuff as well. So if we look at what that looks like, when we turn this up to full volume, we get what the ring modulation looks like. And it creates some interesting waveforms here. And you can use those to patch as well. But now we're starting to get into creative stuff. So anyways, those are some good ideas. I'm just gonna play around with some things to show us out. Uh, thanks so much for watching. In the next couple of videos, I'm gonna patch up the sound studio with it. And then I'm gonna do a video with this Eurorack setup that I have hooked up here. So make sure you subscribe. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments section. Check out my Patreon page, you know, all that stuff. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.